Welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center, Children's Deliverance. Hey, I want to thank everybody for coming. I know we've got kind of a small audience today, but we got a lot of ministers, so thank you guys for showing up. And uh, Presley, I'm excited to have you here. I don't know if you've been here. Have you? Um, for one? Okay, great. So guys, I want to open in prayer, and then we'll get started. Okay. Well, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for everybody that's here today. And I want to thank you for the message. Lord, I want to thank you for um, just everything that you're going to do in these people's lives, in the kids' lives, in their parents' lives, and any revelation you're going to bring forth for the people that are here today. We ask you to have your way, and we pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, today we're going to talk about bullies. Who knows what bullies means? Do you? Jacob? What's it mean? It's like when someone like messes with like another person and like maybe tries to fight them or like right. put them down. Exactly. Let's see what this says. So this is the actual definition of the word bully, okay? To seek to harm, that's to hurt somebody, right? Intimidate. Who knows what intimidate means? Michael, do you know what intimidate means? No? You? Try to scare someone, like. Yes. Yeah, like if somebody's really tall and you're big and you're going, ah, that's intimidating them, okay? Or coerce someone. So that's like if, if uh, I'm trying to get them to do what I want them to do. I'm going to make you do what I want you to do, right? That's bullying. Now, what I thought was very interesting, guys and girls, is these other similar words that they had for the definition. They had a word called persecute. Who's heard that word in the Bible? Persecute, okay. Oppress, same thing. That's a word that we use when we talk about the devil coming against us. Oppression, when he's attacking us, trying to hold us down. Tyrannize, torment. Torment does not feel good, right? Being tormented, I'm thinking about something over and over again. Something keeps happening and it won't leave me alone. That's torment. Browbeat and intimidate. Okay, so what kind of bullying is there? There's all different sorts of ways that people can be bullying each other, right? What do you think are some ways, Michael, that somebody could be a bully? Uh, they, they say like mean stuff to you. Yep, saying mean things. What about you, Jacob? Uh, trying to buy a cyberbully. Yep, great. What about you? What do you think? How could somebody be mean and try to bully you? Yeah, being rude, exactly. What about you? I'm like, like, leave you out and make you feel like embarrassed. Yeah, embarrassing you, leaving you out. Exactly. Let's look at some types of bullying and see how many you guys got. Electronic or cyber bullying. That would happen if you're on social media. Who has social media? Yep. You got social media? Yep. So what could somebody do over the internet to you? Start saying mean things, right? Maybe trying to embarrass you online. Yep, through an email. They could send an email to you and say something mean or try to scare you. Or even what happens in, with computers is you might get somebody trying to steal your money, right? <laughs> Bullying you into giving you money online. That can happen. Okay. Physical bullying includes what? Hitting, kicking, shoving, spitting, beating up, stealing. What if somebody stole from you? That's bullying, right? I t somebody takes my computer, they're trying to bully me, okay? Damaging property, okay? So that's all physical bullying. Social, verbal, social and verbal bullying. So. If I have, if me and Teresa and Kelly, we're all friends and Presley's our friend, but we all gang up on her and we try to push her out of the group, that's social bullying, right? And using our words to push her away and make her feel bad. That's not good. Race, so the color of your skin. Jacob's skin is darker than mine. If I go tell him, I don't like you because you're brown, that's racial bullying, right? If I tell Michael, I don't like you because you're a boy, 
That's gender bullying, right? I don't like you because you're a boy and I'm a girl and girls are better. Well, that's not right. Okay, so that can happen. That's all bullying. Disabilities, if somebody's in a wheelchair or somebody's walking weird like a, with a limp and you make fun of them because they have a disability, that's bullying too, okay? And then religion. We know somebody pretty famous who was bullied about religion in the Bible. Who was it? Who was in the Bible that got bullied? Josiah, what do you think? Who's the number one character in the Bible for us? Do you know his name? What about Jesus? Yeah, Jesus got bullied for his religion, right? For his beliefs. So, what kind of bullying do you think this is, these two girls are doing? What is it? Physical. Physical bullying. And what does Jesus say about that? Well, we got to start going to the scriptures to find out how we're going to deal with this type of thing, right? Because it happens to everybody. It even happens to the adults in the room at work. People will do things and say things to try to hurt you. But guess what? We don't have to be hurt by it. We don't have to be hurt by it because we don't find our comfort and our value in the world. We find it in what God said about us, right? Because we're children of God. That's a very high position to hold to be a child of God, right? So, sharing is caring. That was a famous little saying back in the day. Sharing is caring, right? Being kind to people, right? This says, Proverbs 17, 14 says, to start a conflict is to release a flood. Stop the dispute before it breaks out. See these floodwaters coming out of this gate? So if somebody doesn't hold this back and stop the fight, it can cause destruction, like a flood, right? What would happen, Josiah, if you were standing right here? That wouldn't be good, would it? You're going to get hit by that water, right? And then what happens? Boom, you're knocked out. We don't want that. So he says, you need to stop the conflict before it even happens. Okay? What if someone's being mean to me? What can I do? What do you think, Presley? Um, you can, like, pray for them. Okay, yep, you could pray for them. What else? You got one? What if someone's being mean to you? What can you do? You don't know? Okay. Proverbs 15.1 says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So if I give a gentle answer instead of a, ah, right, it's going to be better for me. I'm not going to stir up anger, right? So if you come at me and you're yelling at me and I start yelling back at you, what's going to happen? Are we going to fight? Okay. If you come at me yelling at me and I say, hey, we don't have anything to fight about, and I'm gentle with you, you're probably going to calm down, right? Okay, so then we can avoid some conflicts that way. We don't have to give in to anger or rage or sadness if we're being bullied or somebody's coming at us, okay? What else can we do? Let's see. Set boundaries with people. You know about boundaries, right, Presley? We talked about that. Okay, she's going to give us some more insight into her boundaries that she set in a little bit. We're going to hear from Presley. But setting boundaries with people, what does that look like? Josiah, let's say you have a friend and they start saying mean things to you. Well, you can say, hey, I'm not going to take that. You can't talk to me like that and you can walk away. That's a boundary, right? I'm not going to keep playing with you if you're going to be mean to me, so I'm going to leave. That's like a boundary, right? We can do that. Get advice from parents or people that love Jesus. And they can tell you how to handle it. Sometimes when we're young, we don't know what to do. It just seems very confusing, and we don't know why we're being bullied. We don't know why people are coming at us. So we can go to somebody who's already been through the situation and ask them, how should I handle it? What should I do? Okay? Pray for the people. You said that one. We can pray for them. 
We don't have to pray with them right in the moment, but we can pray with them when we go home at night because they're probably hurt. There's a reason that they're bullying. There's a reason that they know how to bully. It's because it's happened to them before. Matter of fact, it could be somebody, it could be a kid whose parents are bullying them because they don't know Jesus. We don't know what's happening at their, at their home, so we can pray about that, okay? Tell the devil to get behind you. So here's the other thing. Sometimes it feels like when you're being bullied, you don't have any options. You just feel weak. You can't hit the person because you're going to get in trouble. You can't do anything, but that's not true. This is where spiritual warfare comes in. This is where knowing who you are in Christ comes in. Because the Bible says our battle is not against flesh and blood, right? It's against spiritual powers, demonic powers, evil. Okay, well, how do we fight evil? We use our mouth and we use our authority and we tell the devil to get out, get out of here. Stop bothering me in Jesus name. Okay, so we're not powerless. So if our real fight is with evil forces, then that means we can fight the evil forces without ever putting a hand on a person. Because God loves those people and he wants them saved and healed. Okay? God loves everybody. He wants everybody to come to him. Okay? What else? What about if you're the bully? That's all good if you're being bullied. But what if you're the bully? Jacob, have you ever been a bully to somebody? Yeah? Okay. Great. You can repent for that. Right? You could tell God and you could tell the person even, I'm sorry for that. That was bad. I don't know why I did it, but I did it. Apologize if you hurt somebody, okay? It doesn't feel good to have it done to you. Sometimes people start bullying others because they've been bullied and they've been hurt, and they would rather put the attention on this other person to take it off of themselves because they don't want to be the target. So they start redirecting their attention to somebody else to try to make them sad, okay? That's not how we handle it. We've got to be leaders. We've got to be strong leaders. Okay? Ask for forgiveness from God and the person. And mean it, right? We don't want to make people feel bad. And find out why you're being a bully and ask Jesus to help you. So why are you mad? Why are you trying to hurt somebody? You've got to ask yourself that question. Why am I being naughty? Why am I stealing that toy? Why am I trying to hit somebody? What's going on with me? You might find that you're upset about maybe your parents' divorce. Maybe you're upset about something that happened the day before and you haven't dealt with it. Well, Jesus will help you. He can help you guys, right? But you have to ask for help and you have to be willing to say, I messed up. I did something bad. I need to apologize. And we take accountability. That's what that's called. When I take responsibility for my own actions, okay? Ask God for help and ask him to send his angels. We can do that. The Bible says he has angels that he sends to help us. Ministering spirits is what they're called. We can ask God, God, I need your help and I need you to send your angels even to go with me today to protect me. Okay. And then still be kind and show love to people. All right. Our job as Christians, as Christ followers is to show the love of Christ. We show the love of Jesus, right? When I see a little kid that's shy and it's the first time here, I welcome them. I come up. They don't know me. I know it might be weird for them, but I show them love because I want to show them this is how we treat people and this is how we should always treat everybody. Okay? So now I've got somebody who has a testimony. This just happened. And actually the reason I put this together is because of Presley. She came to me with a question, and so I'm gonna let her come up. I'm gonna ask her some questions that'll help her tell the story, and then maybe that'll help you guys understand how this came about and why it's so important that we address it. Okay? Come on up. Hey, girl. Hi. Come on up. All right. Everybody, this is Presley. Um, I met Presley through a Zoom call that I run for teen girls. So this group is a little bit younger, right? But I started meeting people through the parents, 
or I started meeting teens through the parents that would come in here. And I found there was a lot of teen girls. They really didn't have any direction or guidance in this kind of area. So I did a group, I made a group that was for a little bit older kids, right, teens. So I know Presley and I know her sister Madison. They're both part of our Zoom group. Now Presley, you remember the other day, right? You had messaged me and what did you ask me? Um, how to deal with like being bullied. Okay, and then I called you, right? Yeah. And we talked about it. What did I tell you? Um, you like kind of told me um, about how to like deal with them, about like how to pray about it and stuff. Okay, how to pray about it. What else? What was another thing we talked about? Um, boundaries? Yeah, boundaries and then like asking God to like help me. Yep, and then what about warfare? Did we step on the devil's head? Yeah. Yeah, we sure did. So when you went to school the next day, right, or two days later, I think, what happened when you went to school? Because we prayed in the morning, you guys. I told her, you can call me in the morning and we'll pray together. So we prayed in the morning and then you went to school. How was the day at school? It was really good. I didn't have any problems. Okay. And who was bullying you? Just so everybody knows. Um, there was, do I say their name? No, you don't have to. Okay. There was like mainly this one girl and then there was a couple of other girls that were kind of helping her too. Okay. Were these friends of yours or people you didn't know? These were friends of mine. Okay. So we can even have people that call us friends that start to bully us. Okay. Okay. So then what happened during the day? How did your day go? What did it look like? You ran into the girls and then what? Um, I kind of just prayed over the situation in, in advance so that um, it would like it would go away before it even started. Yeah. All right. So instead of waiting for the devil to show up and beat us up, we stepped in first and attacked him. And we said, no, devil, not today. You're not going to come attack us today. Right? So we went ahead of it. That's called being on the offense. If you know about sports, which I don't because I don't like sports. I know enough <laughs> that I don't like it. We go on the offense to attack the devil first before they start attacking us physically through people. Okay? So that's what we did. All right, Presley. I'm going to have you help me with something else. Okay? So come right here. And I'm going to have you read. These are some verses that are going to help us understand what Jesus says that we need to do. Okay. And how this bullying affects us. All right. So I'm going to have you read this first one for everybody. Whoever says he is in the right and hates his brother is still in the darkness. Um, first John 2, 9. Okay. Whoever, whoever says he's in the light. Okay. So Jacob. If you say, yeah, I love Jesus, I'm a Christian, right? And then you go to school, so, hey, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, I'm in the light. And then you go to school, right? And it says you hate your brother, then you're still in darkness. Well, what does hating your brother look like? It could be a kid at school sitting next to you. You start picking on him, right? You're not showing him love, you're showing him hatred. Well, by default, you're still in darkness because we don't do that to people. Make sense? Okay, so that's what that means. All right, next one. Throw out the mocker and, and fighting goes too. Quarrels and insults will disappear. Proverbs 22 to 10. Okay, so throw out the mocker. What's a mocker? Erica, what's a mocker? Do you know? Um, somebody that like is mocking me, whatever I'm saying, they repeat it too. They repeat it too, like that, <laughs> like that, kind of, right? <laughs> exactly like that. So I'm teasing her, right? I'm teasing her, I'm mocking her, but this could be a serious situation. So now, can I just, can she just pick me up and throw me out? No, she can't, right? She might be able to, but she won't, okay? But if I get myself away from her, right, if she goes away from me, she walks away from me, right, then what, what happens? The fighting goes too. So we're not going to have an argument because there's nothing for us to argue about if she walks away from me. Okay? So you can walk away from somebody who's picking on you. 
You can just walk away. It's fine. Um, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that does go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Okay. Who's going with us? Michael, according to that verse. You got it. Um, right here. God. Yep. There you go. The Lord thy God. He is going with you. He won't fail you. Okay. And he's not going to forsake you. So it might feel like everybody else around you left you behind. And now I'm lonely and I have no friends because I chose to walk away from a situation. But he says, no, I'm there with you. You're never alone. You don't have to be afraid. I'm with you. Okay? Isn't that good news? Yes. Okay, next one. Okay. You shall not take the, um, wait, what does that say? Vengeance. Uh, the vengeance bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19. <clears throat> okay, that's a very, very strong command. Right? When God says, hey, you're not going to come against somebody, you're not. Vengeance is where if Teresa comes up and hits me, I decide that I'm going to pay her back. I'm going to get revenge. I'm going to pay her back. God says, no, no, you're not. And you're not going to hold the grudge against her either. So I'm not going to go home after she does something to me and sit there and go, oh, I'm so mad. I hate her. I'm not going to forgive her. We don't do that. Even if she's bullying me. Instead, I pray for her. Like we saw on the other slide, I pray for her. I ask God to help her and reveal to her what's going on inside of her. Why is she doing that? We don't know. Okay. And it says against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So if I love my neighbor as myself, am I going to go beat myself up? No. Am I going to steal from myself? No. Am I going to curse myself out? No. Right? I'm going to, I want to be nice to myself. So then I'm going to be nice to everybody else around me. Because when I do that, then they're going to do that to me. Okay? Next one. So this one, Psalms 138, is actually here. It's only eight verses, so I'm going to have you read it. Okay? And you can read this side right here. Okay. It's an easier to read version. I will give you thanks with all my heart. I will sing your praise before the heavenly beings. I will bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your constant love and truth. You have exalted your name and your promise above everything else. On this day I called, you answered me, you increased strength within me. All the kings on earth will give you thanks. Lord, when you hear what you have promised, or when they hear what you have promised, they will, give sing, they will sing of the, Lord ways, the Lord's ways, for the Lord's glory is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he takes note of the humble, but he knows the... Um, wait, what does that say? Haughty. The haughty from a distance. That means like prideful. Mm -hmm. So he's in favor of the humble, the ones that are, oh, you know, I don't think I'm so good. I'm so awesome, right? He takes note of the people that are humble. They're not full of pride. Okay. If I walk into the thick of danger, you will preserve my life from the anger of my enemies. You will extend your hand. Your right hand will save me. The Lord will fulfill his promise for me. Lord, your faithful love endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. Okay, thank you for reading that. You're good. Thanks, Presley. Okay, so this whole, this whole scripture right here tells us all about what the Lord is doing. Everything is for his glory, and then we are to show his glory, and when we struggle, we go to him. 
and he's going to help us. Okay? Jesus knows how we feel. He was abandoned by his friends. He was rejected, okay, by his own people. But he still showed love no matter what. Now let's see if I can get this to play. Maybe. Oh, what did you do that for? I don't like you. Why? You started my school. And I don't want you telling anyone I go there. But I haven't. Well, don't. Anna, uh, why are you not going to school today? Jesus, you'll do me at school. Oh, that's not right. I'm not going to go. Mum's got a mum's teacher, and she's going to talk to the class later today. Okay, I'll see you soon. I will bring you. Oh, Jesus, thanks, Sally. Boys and girls, I would like to remind you, but you're not accepted here or anywhere else. You must be respectful of everyone in our school. Mom, why do I have to go to Sun School? You know I don't enjoy it. It's not cool. Well, I would like you to go. Wait up, Anna. Why were you not at school on Friday? You were nasty to me and hurt me, so I was too upset to go. Hello, Hello Taylor. Hello. Jesus is God's only son. And he saw how gentle and kind Jesus is to everyone. He has healed many people, taught people the right way to live, and how love one another. Why did the religious leaders not like him? Didn't they bully him as Ellie, that is exactly right. I think one of Jesus' disciples was paid a lot of money to betray him. Yes, his name was Jesus. How could Jesus do that? Sometimes we don't understand why people do sad things. Jake. Can you tell me something bad the soldiers did to Jesus? Yes, Mr. Taylor. They beat him up. That's right, Jake. And we're going to talk about that now. Let's watch and see what happens. The religious leaders were jealous of Jesus and worried about people following him and believing what he taught. I see the scribes and Pharisees are gathered in the crowd again today. The people, they want to make Jesus King. They all like Jesus. Look at him. Showing love and kindness to everyone. I'm fed up with Jesus always telling the truth. People aren't even listening to us anymore. The only way we can what's going on is to tell lies about Jesus to the Romans. We need to grab him when there are less people about us. This is our only chance. Look, things are going on, and it will be dark soon. According to Judas, Jesus is on his own, just with the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. Get the soldiers ready. Jesus, get it to Jesus. Soldiers, are you ready? Quick, Why do we want to arrest Jesus when all we did was the kindest things? He's here. I told you he'd be here. Who are you looking for? Keep the throat. That's me. Peter is attacking a servant of the high priest. Don't worry. He is healing the man's ear now. Boys and girls, it's not right to hurt anyone. Did you know that the Bible says our tongue, although it's a little harmony, it can be like a sword and do real damage to people's lives? We must be very careful what we say to everyone because we can really hurt somebody's feelings. Why didn't Jesus fight back? Because if you're being bullied, you can't solve it just by fighting back. Quick, take him and throw him into prison. When they put Jesus in prison, they were nasty to him. They pulled his hair from his beard. They made fun of him by putting a purple robe on him. Hail King of Jews! Hail the King of the Jews! Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Boys and girls, Jesus showed love and forgiveness to those who were bullying him. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. 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 Thank you, Mr. Taylor.
students to hear it. That was very helpful today. You're welcome, Anna. Goodbye. Anna, I have come to say I am sorry for the way I behaved at school. I never thought my words were hurting you and I should not have pulled your hair. There were no excuse for me behaving like that. I am so sorry. I was hurt too, and that's why I didn't go to school on Friday. I was so upset, I thought we were friends. Can you forgive me? I didn't think I could, but after hearing how Jesus forgave those that bullied him, of course I will. Boys and girls, listen to me. You have been learning today how I was bullied, and I know what is not nice because I was badly I love and care for every one of you. You can always talk to me in prayer at any time of the day or night. I will listen and answer your prayers. Remember, every one of you is unique and special to God. I loved you so much for all the wrong things you have done. If you are bullying people like I did, you need to stop and realize how you are affecting them. Hey, you'll never guess what happened after Sunday school. What happened? Jake, you know I me. I was so happy. Oh, Anna, I'm so happy for you too. God is so good to answer my prayers for you. Oh, let's go play Jake. Sorry about the uh, cutting out of that video, but you guys get the point, right? Jesus went through the same things that we go through. Everything we went through, Jesus has gone through. So he understands. So when we have a problem, we can pray, we can ask him for help, and he'll help us. Okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this teaching. If you are struggling with something and you need prayer, we've got a bunch of ministers here and friends that are here to pray for you guys and help you if you need to repent of bullying or if you need to repent for anything, we're gonna go around and we're gonna pray with you guys now, okay? All right, so if I can have uh, the ministry team start praying with the folks, then that would be great. And parents, we're gonna pray with you first. We're gonna get with you guys first to make sure that everything's good with you and find out what you need help with, okay? All right. Awesome. How are you guys? What's up, Jacob? You want to you want to come right here? I want to ask you a question. How did you feel about the the presentation? I know you're a little bit old for that style, but you got the point, right? It, it works for everybody, doesn't it? Okay. So when I asked you, I said, you know, so have you ever bullied anybody? You say, yeah. Okay. Me too. I have to. All right. Why do you think it is that you would do that? Sorry. Pride. Pride? Go deeper than that. Because like, for me, I was a class clown. And I could make people laugh at other people's expense. Do you find that for yourself? Okay. Is that really what you want to be known for? Do you think? I mean, so here's the deal. How did the other person that got picked on, how did they react? Embarrassed? Okay. And then, so how many kids would you say were there with you, right, kind of pointing out this person? Like three, four, five? Okay, so it's one against three, four, five people, basically? Okay. Have you ever known somebody that killed themselves? Any kids? No? Oh, let's turn that off. There we go. All right, meantime, I'm all right, so I do. I know of a lot of kids that, you know, they get bullied and then they literally are like, it crushes their whole life. Well, so like, imagine this. Say your friend group, the four or five people, they turn on you and you end up being the embarrassed one. How would that feel? 
It would suck. Really bad, wouldn't it? Right? But here's the thing. When we do that, because I used to too. I was like that too. Right? Trying to be the tough, the tough person. And I didn't want to get picked on myself. So if I picked on other people, nobody would mess with me because they were afraid that I would do it to I would do something to them, right? So it was a way for me to protect myself from them. But here's the thing. I was a follower. I wasn't I wasn't a leader. I was a follower. And I'm following basically evil stuff, right? To make somebody else feel bad, to to make myself look strong, to make myself look funny. They think it's funny, but does anybody else? You know what I mean? We don't know. There's probably a lot of people that look around and they go, that wasn't cool, that wasn't funny, right? But because we're all laughing, we think it's great. It wasn't until I came to Christ, and that was only three years ago, okay? Like, I was full on in the world. Like, I have, I'm fully tattooed. I, I lived a very wicked life, and I would hurt people for my gain. In other ways, too. First it starts as bullying, but as you get older, it's other things. Stealing from people, right? I want it. It's mine. I'm taking it. That kind of attitude. If you don't catch it now, you're going to end up like that. I've been to prison. I've been to jail numerous times. Drinking, drugs, partying, all of that. I did all that. Excessively. And it hurt me, right? In the long run, it hurt me. Why am I nervous? But why did all that happen? Because I didn't catch it when I was young. I had an opportunity to stop, and I chose not to. So if you make wise decisions now, right? Wisdom comes from the Word of God. It's the only wisdom that we have, okay? If you believe what God says, and you know you have to stand before Him one day soon, and He says, hey, what did you do with the life I gave you? And then he puts up a big screen and he starts showing you all the stuff you've done. How are you going to feel? Yeah. And what happens to somebody who's broken God's law? Right. Because he's righteous. Right? He's holy. He's just. He doesn't want that for us. But he gave us a way out. Right? Through Christ, he gave us a way out. So... I would encourage you to challenge yourself. Instead of going the easy road, the easy road is, I'm going to do whatever they're doing. That's the easy thing to do, right? It's easy to go, oh yeah, this guy is picking on this person. I'm going to join in because it looks kind of fun or funny. But you also know that inside of you, there's a little pain when you do it. it kind of, you're like, well, it kind of feels off, but you push that away. Don't you? Right? You feel it, and then you go, nah, I'm just going to keep going. It's fine. It's fine. You have a voice in there that goes, no, it's fine. It's all good. Look, it's haha, ha, it's funny. Who is that voice? Do you know? 100%. So, who do you want to listen to? Him? Or the Almighty God? I mean, he's, he's number one, right? Nobody gets away from him, right? So, it's, I've told people like this, right? You got the king, he's number one. And then you've got, like, this little minion guy, and you decide to go with this guy? You make this guy number one? That's dumb. That's just like straight up dumb, right? I used to do that too. Or I thought that I was this guy. I thought I was number one, which was a lie too. Okay? So you got to start making a better decision and you got to challenge yourself because it seems like you're pretty smart. Right? You're a smart guy? Yeah. If you're smart, then instead of going the easy path, you're going to choose a more difficult path, and you're going to do it to glorify God. You're going to do it because the harder path, it's like this. If you want to get all built at the gym, right, does it take work? Okay. So if you want to get really strong, you have to challenge yourself, right? Sometimes you walk out of there limping like, oh my goodness, what did I do, right? But what happens? A year down the road, People are like, hey, you've been working out. Like, I can see a difference. It's the same thing spiritually. It's the same thing in our daily walk with others. Sometimes we have to go against the crowd, and we have to, you know, fight against what's easy 
instead of for what's right, even if we're, we're a little scared to do it. So I would challenge you. You're going to be around the, this friend group again, I'm sure. You're still friends with them? Okay. And you're going to see this other person that you guys were picking on, right? Now, wh why did you guys target him? Remember, we had the, the listing of groups of things. Why were you targeting him? What's wrong with him or her? My head. Uh, Does the person you picked on have a disability? What's wrong with them? They're shy? So, okay, that's the only thing wrong with the person in your eyes. They're shy. Okay, is that fair to pick on them because they're, what if you found out, what if you could peek into their life and you found out that their dad was abusing them and anytime they tried to talk, they get punched in the face by their dad and the reason they're quiet is because they're abused. What if you found that out and then they come to school and instead of trying to be, just be normal, kind or ignore them, you start drilling them because they're quiet. How would that make you feel if you knew that? Yeah. Well, I can guarantee you a lot of people that ha are shy, the root of that is fear. Something happened to him that made him extremely fearful. And he, he can't speak. It's a spirit. He's got a spirit of fear attacking him. And then, so now, he's internally attacked with fear. And externally, he's being attacked with a bullying spirit. So that creates a lot of pressure on somebody. This is why kids kill themselves. 13, 14, 15, 16. Two weeks ago, I have a, a picture actually on Facebook. She's 17 years old, she killed herself. She shot herself in the head because a guy broke up with her. Dead in hell right now. So what we think might be little to somebody else is really big. We have no idea. That kid probably goes home at night and just cries. Does he have any friends? No. So how do you think you can make a better decision? And are you willing to, would be the question. Are you willing to stand up against your friends that are all bullies and say, you know what, I'm done with that. I don't want to do that. Hey, bro, look, I'm sorry for picking on you. I don't know what you go through, but I realize I was wrong. Will you forgive me for that? And you can stand up and your friends might go, yeah, dude, I'm sorry. You might be the leader and change the whole, all those people into doing something right instead of doing something wrong. Could you see that? Now, which one of your friends are you the most afraid of what they would say? Yeah. None of them? You're not afraid of what any of them think. Are you the leader? No. You're not? Who's the leader? Who's the leader of the group? Who's the one that started it? The taller kid? Okay. He's probably got something going on at home too that would make him do that. So we got to pray for these people. We got to pray for the one that got bullied. We got to pray for the one that's doing the bullying. And then you got to be strong and decide you're going to be a leader and you're going to walk in the light and not in the darkness, right? Okay. Is Jesus your savior? He is. Okay. If he was walking with you every day, which he is, would he be happy or upset? Okay, do you want that? No, because he's the only one that can save us, right? Do you know how he saves us? What does that mean? What does that mean legally? Do you know? Like, let me give you a scenario. God is the judge, right? So you've seen a judge sitting at the court, right? He's sitting on the big bench, right? He has the gavel, okay? Normally there's lawyers in the court, right? There's one lawyer that represents the guilty, and there's one lawyer that represents, he's the prosecutor, he's the one going after the criminal, right? Okay, so if God's the judge, the devil is the prosecuting attorney. He's the one that's accusing you. You're guilty. 
Okay, you're the guilty one. And Jesus is your public defender. He's the lawyer that's he's going for you, right? So God's going to judge you. And you've got the devil going, he's wrong, he's guilty. And you've got Jesus going, I'm here to defend him. Now let's find out if you're, if you're really guilty in God's eyes, okay? Because God has rules. Have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen anything? Never. Even if it was small. Anything that didn't belong to you. Yeah, I probably like to have There you go, okay? Have you ever taken God's name in vain? OMG. Okay. Do you know that in the Old Testament, do you know what the punishment for using God's name in vain was? Death. Do you know that the Jews, they won't even say his name? They won't even say it verbally. They don't even write it because it's too holy. That's crazy, right? Yeah, the punishment was death to use his name. So what about lust? Have you ever looked at somebody with lust? Okay, so check this out. Here's your court case. I'm not judging you because I've done all this stuff too. Ready? You're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, luster, adulterous. That's what it's called, right? Because it says if you lust after somebody and you're thinking about doing something sexual with them, you've already done it because you did it in your mind. Okay? That's your court case. Lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterer at heart. Now in front of God, when he looks at you, is he going to say you're innocent or guilty? Guilty. Okay. That's why you need Jesus. Right? You need him to come in and pay your debt. So if you got a bunch of speeding fines, let's say you've been driving around, you've been parking illegally, you get a bunch of tickets, okay, and you can't pay it. It's a million dollars. You don't have a million dollars. But Jesus comes in and he says, I'm going to pay it for him. You can be let go legally. And it's justified to the judge, right? He says, okay, the debt's been paid. I'm satisfied. I'm letting him go even though he's guilty. That's what Jesus did. Legally. Okay? It's a legal thing. God has to punish sin, period, because he's a judge. Jesus is our way out. He's the person that can step in our place and pay the debt. But if you don't honor him, if you don't honor him, if you violate what he said and you don't repent, he takes his hands off of you. And then you have to pay the debt before God on your own. So you have to choose. Do I want to pay the debt on my own or do I want Jesus to pay the debt for me? But in order for Jesus to pay the debt for me, I have to be for him. I have to love him and do what he told me to do. Make sense? Does that help? Breaking it down like that? Okay, cool. So what do you want to do? I can't change you. I can just give you the facts and you have to make a wise decision. So what do you want to do? Do you want to keep going the same way? Or do you want to do something different? Okay. Are you willing to repent? Tell God you're sorry? Okay, and let him help you? Okay, good. Tell me what things in your mind you struggle with. Do you struggle with anger? Do you struggle with fear? Do you struggle with doubt? Do you struggle with well, bullying? Do you struggle with lust? Do you struggle with what are the top things that you know are not right that you struggle with so I can pray with you about it? Lust and anger? What are you angry about? Or what does your mind tell you you're angry about? What about school? It's stressful? Okay. What's something else you could do besides get angry? What, yeah, what else could you do besides get angry about it? You can get help, right? So, what spirit is that? When you get angry about algebra or whatever, right? That's is that a spirit from God? No. Okay. How do we fight? How do we fight spiritually? Do you know how? No. Praying is like this. Lord, I need your help. I don't like this. I don't want to be this way. I'm sorry. That's praying, right? What about warfare? That's different. 
So if I told you I want you to fight against that spirit of anger, what would you do? You have an idea? No? Okay. You have a choice. You can go, that's me, and I'm angry because I feel it, and it's my... Or you can say, that's not me. That's you, devil. I command you in the name of Jesus to get away from me right now. I command you out of my mind. I'm not going to get angry about this. I'm making a different decision right now. And you come after the devil. Get out of my heart. Get out. Get out of my body. Get out of my emotions. Because you can feel it, right? Just like lust. I could feel it. I could. Oh, yeah. I know. I, right? No. Get out of my body, you spirit of lust. Get out of my mind. Right now. I'm not going to have perverted thoughts. I'm not going to think about that. I repent of watching porn with my friends. Right? I repent of that. Do you know that that is so dangerous? Do you know that I met a kid? He was in his early 20s. Not too much older than you. He decided to watch porn one night. This is what happened. He's in the dark. He told me the story. He's in the dark. He has his laptop. He puts play on the video. He said out of the screen came a black orb. It came out and it floated above. It was darker than the whole room. It floated above the laptop and he looked at it and it went whoop into his eyes. And from that day on, he was schizophrenic, hearing voices. I'm not kidding. I met him here. He had to go through a year and a half of deliverance to get rid of schizophrenia demons that came in through pornography. That's messed up. These are not normal thoughts. Thoughts are like they pass through your mind. You don't hear them like you hear me. He would hear them like you're hearing me inside his head and nobody else heard it. That's terrible. Okay? You don't want that, right? You don't want that. You don't want something like that to happen. People that make those videos, a lot of them are Satanist. And they pray over those videos. They put demons into those videos. And demonic music is the same thing. You've heard of that, right? People make music and they invoke demons on the tracks. Have you ever heard a song, like a worldly song, and you can't get it out of your head and it plays over and over and over again? Yeah? Me too. And I used to listen to all kinds of music, probably the music you've listened to, right? Rap, rock, you name it. I was into it. I went to Little Wayne concerts. I, w I did all this. I'm not kidding. Okay? That music is very addicting. It's addicting because spiritually it's affecting your soul. And if you let that stuff in, these are portals. Ears, eyes, right? All the entrances of the body, they're portals into the soul. So whatever you let in, right? You can let demonic entities in through your eyes, through what you hear, through sex. Okay? You've got to stay protected. <laughs> Do you know what will happen? Here's what could happen. There's a lot of people that started off watching pornography. Okay? Just normal porn, right? Guy and a girl. Guess where they ended up later on? Because the porn that they watched in the beginning wasn't good enough. So then it would go from this kind of porn to like gay porn. To child porn. To animal porn. I'm not kidding. I know ministers that work in this ministry and they go to the jails to talk to pedophiles and people that have raped children and they all say the same thing. It started with pornography. It didn't start immediately in pornography. They didn't first go there and watch it. That kind, it started with basic man and woman. Then it went all the way to kids and then they started doing it in real life. That is terrifying, isn't it? Why? Because they let the spirit in. I had a big spirit of perversion. I did. A demon, a perversion. What did that do? It got me into lesbianism. I'm not kidding. And I had to get delivered of that. I was married to a woman. I'm not kidding. I was. But how did it start? Well, it started way back then when I was a kid, and I started getting into pornography and masturbation and all of that. And then it escalated. Okay? You don't want that, do you? That can happen because we can't control it. People are not born that way. A spirit gets in. So you, right now, are you straight? You are. You continue watching porn? You could, you could let in a spirit. I'm not kidding. I'm telling you the truth. Do you believe me? I am telling you the truth. You will think 
oh, it's just this, and this is what I like. And what you don't know is what's coming in that you can't see. And the next thing you know, they, you start liking something that you never liked before. That is dangerous. I went through it. I'm telling you. Okay? So, you can have that cast out of you. You can command him out. You start getting those feelings? Command him out in Jesus' name. You what? I don't watch it, but like I look at it. Okay, same thing, right? It's an image coming in through the eyes, right? Okay? Playboys, whatever, Hustler, doesn't matter. If it's a magazine, if it's online, if it's just ads of women and bikinis, it's lust, right? Okay. You got to get rid of it. Otherwise, you run the risk of having something bigger come in. Look, all around us, what you can't see is there are demons everywhere. And what they're doing is they're looking for an entrance into your body. Why would they want that? Why do they want to be inside of you? Yeah, that's one of their main goals to take you to hell. But they love to act out sin. They don't have a body, so they can't act out sin when they don't have a body. You have a body. The real you is inside your body, right? When that body dies, you don't die. You either go to heaven or hell, right? So, they need a body. They don't have one. So when they get inside of you, now you got two people or three people or four people living in there, and they start giving you ideas like, hey, you should do this. You should do that. Oh, look, I'm going to light you up boop, with lust. You should go watch that. You should go. It's their ideas, not yours. So when you get another person inside your body that's evil, that loves sin, they start giving you ideas about sin. And you hear it in your own mind. Why? Because they're in there using your brain, using your body, right? Using everything that you have, using your emotions. And you have to separate yourself from them and you have to command him out of your body. Okay? Do you want to share that body with someone else? Well, you are already, just so you know. Do you want him out? <laughs> okay, awesome. Let's do it. Okay, so this is what we do. We're going to renew your relationship with Christ. Does that sound good? Okay, so I'll lead you in a prayer. You want to repent? Get right with him today? Amen. Okay. And then, who do you need to forgive? Hmm? Who, do you, who do you need to forgive? Is there anybody? Okay. Okay. So, what about yourself? Do you need to forgive yourself? Okay. Anyone in your family? Your mom? Okay. What does she do? And she left me for two years. She left me for two years. She still is. She's still in her second So the witchcraft? Okay. All right. So those spirits that are coming down from the family, right? They're in the family line. So what they do is they jump down, boop, 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 onto the kids. So they would love to get you into that. They would love to put you in witchcraft, right? And have you really start bullying people with witchcraft. They would love that, but you, your job is to stop it here because you are a child of the king, not a child of this little demon down here, right? You don't want to be associated with that. So we're going to break that curse off of your life, okay? And you got to forgive mom. You know why? The spirits came down above her. They came down to her. So she she's no different than you, really, right? You're making bad decisions. She made bad decisions. You can stop it sooner. She didn't stop it. See that? She's no different than you. She was a kid. She got deceived. You're a kid. You're deceived. She didn't know about this. Nobody taught her. And then she just went on like I did. Nobody taught me either. And I went my whole life. If I would have had kids, I probably would have left them too. Because I didn't know. I was selfish. And I had demons. Right? So instead of being mad at her, pray for her. Would you rather her die and go to hell or go to heaven? Okay? How's she going to get there if nobody's praying for her? 
Huh? How is your mom going to get saved if no one's praying for her? It's not going to happen, right? She needs help. So would, if you'd rather see her in heaven, then it makes sense that you'd pray for her instead of being mad at her and pushing her away, right? That doesn't mean that you just let her in and then she can just do whatever she wants. No, because there's a boundary. Remember, we talked about boundaries. But instead of being mad, because the Bible says this, forgive so my father will forgive you. That was Jesus, right? So if you don't forgive and God doesn't forgive you because you're not forgiving, what happens to you? You go down. Why? Because if Jesus was innocent, which he was, okay, and he died for you who are guilty, how can you who's guilty judge somebody else? Guilty can't judge guilty. Only innocent can judge guilty, right? So when you make yourself the judge and you say, I'm not forgiving it, I choose judgment and not mercy, God says, oh no, you don't get to do that. You have to leave the judgment to Christ. He's the judge because he's innocent. You're guilty, so you can't judge mom. When she's guilty, you're not a good judge. You're a bad judge, right? Does that make sense? That's why we have to forgive. Because we're all sinners. I can't go, oh, she's terrible. She's a sinner. Look at yourself. What are you doing? You do the exact same thing she did. Oh, I'm mad because they left me and they chose something else over me. Well, that kid is mad because you bullied them and pushed them away when they did nothing to you. So what's the difference? You're awful to somebody. Someone was awful to you. It's the same thing. And you can even look at it and go, well, that hurt me. And you go, yeah, well, that kid that you bullied, they're hurt too from you. It's no different. See? So our job is to forgive. Because when you go over to that kid and you say, look, I'm sorry, you're hoping he's going to forgive you, right? Okay. But if he's like, no, I'm not doing, no, that feels terrible. And your mom's going to want forgiveness. And so we're going to give it to her. We're going to give people what they need, not what they deserve. Just like Christ did for you. He's going to give you what you need. You need a savior. You don't need condemnation. You don't need hell. You need a savior. Make sense? Okay. Does that all help? All right. Perfect. So we'll repent. I'll lead you in a prayer. Okay. And you just tell the Lord what you're going to repent for. And we're going to forgive mom. And we're going to forgive yourself. Right? Is there anybody else to forgive that you can think of? That's it. Okay. What about siblings? They're good? Yeah? Okay, great. Dad, he's good? Okay. Teachers? Good? All right. Okay. Lost in anger. What about fear? About, of, of what? Okay. And we're going to break that curse. Okay. Have you ever said it out loud? I don't think I'm going to pass a grade. Okay. Do you know what you did there? Look, the Bible says this. Blessing and cursing is in the tongue. I'm not going to pass a grade. Okay, you just spoke a word curse over your life. You want to break it? You're going to pass eighth grade. We're going to break that. You spoke an, a curse over you. we got to break it in Jesus' name. Okay? You are going to pass eighth grade. And God's going to help you do it. Because you're going to get right with Him today. And you're going to stop trying to impress your friends, and you're going to start focusing on what you need to at school. Okay? All right, awesome. All right, let's pray. Well, Lord, I want to thank you for Jacob. I want to thank you for his heart, Lord, that he loves you, and he wants to be set free. He wants to be right with you. He wants God to be his heavenly father. And Lord, he's willing to repent and change his ways. And he needs your help to do it. But Lord, he's going to renew his relationship with you first. Say this, dear Lord, I want you to be the king of my life. I want to lay down my, my own life and the things that I want. And I want to have what you have for me. 
Lord, I repent of all bullying, of all lust, of all anger, and all fear. In Jesus' name. Lord, I'm so sorry for hurting that kid at school. I don't want my conscience. I don't want my conscience to be seared like a hot iron so I can't feel when things are wrong. Lord, help me to have the strength and the boldness to do what's right and not give in to the world and its ways. Lord, I choose to forgive myself for all my mistakes and I forgive my mom for abandonment for making me not feel loved I let it go and I choose to pray for her because I want her saved I want to be in eternity with my family I don't want to be condemned so thank you Jesus for what you did for me by paying my debt when I was guilty I give you my life I dedicate myself to you and I'm going to use my authority against every evil spirit in Jesus name okay now I'm going to pray for you okay I want you to pay attention to what I say because this is how you're going to fight going forward and say this Lord I renounce all witchcraft all Santa Muerte I cast it down right now I break every evil Evil altar, every evil altar that had my name on it, that had me dedicated to it, I break you now in Jesus' name. Okay, right now I command every evil spirit to come off of him in the mighty name of Jesus. Leave now, all lust, come out right now in Jesus' name. Let him go, all anger, come out, all pride. Say, Lord, I repent of all pride. Come off of him right now in Jesus' name. Come out of his heart right now. Let him go. Let him go. Get out. Get out right now. All anger, all resentments, all unforgiveness. Lord, I repent of my unforgiveness. Lord, I repent of my unforgiveness. Come off of him right now. All fear, fear of not being loved, fear of not being taken care of, unforgiveness towards mom. Go in Jesus' name. Let him go right now. Let him go. Come off of him in the mighty name of Jesus. All heaviness, go. All anger, go. Let him go right now. All lust. Lord, I repent of watching stuff I shouldn't. Lord, I repent of watching things that I shouldn't. Lord, I repent of listening to things I shouldn't. I'll get rid of anything you ask me to. <clears throat> Anything? Yes. Get out of his body right now. Take a deep breath. I want you to cough. Come out right now. Get out of there. Go. 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 Come out of his body right now. Out. Take a deep breath. Cough him out. He's in there. Get out, devil. Come off of him right now in Jesus' name. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out of his heart right now. Go. Go. Go in the name of Jesus right now. Let him go. Come out of that body. Right now, every spirit of witchcraft, go in Jesus' name. Get out, get out, get out. Every dedication that was made over him, I command you out in Jesus' name right now. Get out, devil. Let him go. Let him go. Come out of his body. Come out of his heart right now. All heaviness, all depression, go. Go in Jesus' name right now.